Welcome back to another episode of Back to the Future, the game. We're gonna continue. Do 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 do. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael, uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, H two A multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A. Right? No, no. What am I missing here? Or do we take H's stamp and turn it into line? Line operator. Pardon me, please. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A might not be equal to A's expectation value, but only if the coefficient of friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, is that even possible? Oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's Newton. But how many Newtons are required to maintain a constant mass if acceleration is reduced by the inverse of the derivative of the speed relative to the speed of light? Throw it. Don't think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I... Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Hello. Goodbye. Do 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 do. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter, very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Really? Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the legal eagle act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone... I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together, and we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. <laughs> so Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till nine. Nine at night? 
But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. Wow. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. To A's expectation value, and only if the coefficient of friction remains constant in the gravitational constant. <laughs> Have you found my younger self yet? Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I've missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, <laughs> I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Vern to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. <laughs> Where'd the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yep. Yeah? Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine, one that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Griff Tannen from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... It's for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. <coughs> of course. So, what were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty. <laughs> I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? How strange. Heidi almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. So how'd you wind up in jail in 1931, anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here, in jail, charged with arson. That's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. <laughs> Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. <laughs> What's the story with this Kid Tannen jerk anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, 
I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Ah, oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good know. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional English. Membrane. So... It'll be fine. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is that even possible? Oh, let's start over. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket-powered drill. Where did you learn so much about... science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no <laughs> way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's a subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. No! <gasps> Shh! It's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. <laughs> Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. What 
the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. And he's very busy today. Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Where's the office? I forget. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. On second thought, I'm not hungry. Then quit wasting my time. Shine! So, one more thing about that hat. You're testing my patience, boy! I sure could go for some peanuts. Lucky for you, I'm in a giving mood. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What did you do? Oh! <clears throat> do, 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 do. Run, Marty! Give me that run. hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen! <laughs> Ow! Fix me up! <laughs> Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out! He must have big pockets. Hey, honey, come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy, can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Where is he going? Only one way to find out. Deja vu.
Well, well, look who's back! They say rats always return to the scene of the sinking ship. Uh, get him, Matches! Come down from there, you What do you think you're doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! Don't make Einstein! Help! Yeah, lay off! Get away from me, you crazy mutt! Go! Go away, dog! We're busy here! Go on, scram! Hey! Where'd he go? You let him get away, idiot! Okay, I'm gonna leave it there and we'll be back for some more back to the future of the game. Uh, if you uh, like this, please uh, uh, do thumbs up and uh, subscribe. And if you want to leave a comment, uh, put it down there. Thank you. Bye now.